Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. Today I'm going to show you how to get some N64 games running at full speed on your homebrew-enabled Nintendo Switch. And this is made possible thanks to a developer by the name of M4XW, who has released a beta N64 emulator core for RetroArch that supports dynamic recompiling, making N64 games run much better. So for this demonstration, I'm using the SX OS custom firmware on the Nintendo Switch firmware 6.2 with RetroArch installed along with an NSP RetroArch forwarder using a modified Mupin 64 Plus Core for N64 emulation. And before I show you how to set up this beta version of Mupin 64 Plus, let's go ahead and check out some N64 games in action. Here's Mortal Kombat 4, and previously this game was averaging anywhere from 50 frames per second to 39, making it very unplayable. And now it's averaging 58 to 60 frames per second, making it finally playable. And I wouldn't say it's running amazing yet, but it's definitely acceptable and I would consider this a huge improvement. But unfortunately, this does not work for all games. For instance, Mortal Kombat Trilogy still performs horrible. It should be at around 60 frames per second, and I'm dropping all the way down to 20 frames per second. Then with the next game I tested, Doom, it actually played great, running at full speed most of the time, which is 30 frames per second for this game. The frames per second gets kind of weird for N64 games. I would say the majority of the games run full speed at 30 frames per second, but there was some games mixed in that ran full speed at 60 frames per second as well. Here's Gex, another game that runs full speed at 30 frames per second, and it seems to play great. So I would say overall the majority of the games seem to show a huge improvement. So in order for this to work, you will need a homebrew enabled switch with RetroArch installed, along with the NSP RetroArch forwarder and that NSP will allow you to launch RetroArch from the main menu like this, which also gives RetroArch more access to the RAM memory, which is needed to run the Mupin 64 Plus Core. If you try to access RetroArch from the homebrew menu and then run the Mupin 64 Plus Core, more than likely it's gonna crash because the apps inside the homebrew menu have limited RAM access. And I will include the RetroArch NSP forwarder down below in the description. Also, I will leave a link to a post where you can find useful information regarding this beta version of the Mupin 64 Plus Core, and I will have separate direct links for that Mupin 64 Plus Core, along with the necessary RetroArch config files down below as well. So first thing I recommend to do is make a backup of your RetroArch folder that's located on the micro SD card for your Nintendo Switch. That way you can easily revert back to the original setup if needed in the future. So just go ahead and copy this folder and save it wherever you choose. So on the right side of the screen here is going to be my micro SD card for the Nintendo Switch. And on the left side of the screen is going to be the download for the new beta version of the Mupin 64 Plus Core. And that will be inside a zip file. So once we open that up, there's going to be a RetroArch folder that's inside this. And we're going to go ahead and just copy that and paste that over inside the micro SD card for the Nintendo Switch. And that will overwrite the files that are inside the RetroArch folder. Next, it's time to download the config files. So now on the left side of the screen is going to be the config files for RetroArch. So inside that zip file is going to be two files. I'm going to copy those and paste them inside the RetroArch folder. So I've now added a Mupin 64 Plus Core along with two config files. If I open up that RetroArch folder, you'll see the two config files right here. And inside that core folder will be that new beta version of that Mupin 64 Plus Core. And it will have the same name as the original one did, but it will be the beta version now. And now I'm all set up and ready to go. And I would like to mention with these new config files, it does overclock the CPU to the maximum performance of 1700 MHz, which is pushing the CPU to the max. And some people are saying it's safe, there's nothing to worry about, but for my personal preference, I don't like to exceed 1500 MHz and feel it's better to play it safe. Also with these new configs, accessing the RetroArch menu is done by pressing down on both Joy-Con sticks at the same time, so it's a little bit different now to access that menu. Okay, well hopefully this helped you out and you can get those N64 games running better on your Nintendo Switch. It's time for me to go. If you liked this video, if you could, hit that like button and have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time.